What up guys? I'm on my way to see Spiral from the Book of Song for the second time. Um, to be honest, I was robbed of the surprise. Someone commented who the killer was early in the day and I think that kind of muddled my experience. So I'm going into this one clear-minded. I already know what happens and now I'm here to judge it for what it is, you know? So I'll see you guys in there. We got to experience opening the movie theater again. Woo! That popcorn smell. Mmm. I always love this theater though. It's real clean. I don't know about you guys, but I've missed the movie theater so long that I even missed the bathroom. Let's go. Let me stop fucking around. For all the people that haven't been able to go to the movie theaters or you're reluctant or you're scared, you missed this. You know you missed this. Yesterday I seen it in digital. Today I have to see it in IMAX, baby. Oh yeah. Looks like we're seeing the billboards. I do. What is it, Theater 19? So you got options here. You got Dolby or IMAX. So look, you walk in the halls. Oh, we almost there, baby. We almost there. But usually I finish my popcorn before the movie starts. All right, guys. So as you can see, I'm leaving the theaters right now. Absolutely, the second viewing was needed. And it absolutely cleared up a bunch of things. Allowed me to view the movie for what it was. Let's go straight to the studio to talk with One Time Skills. What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, One Time Skills. I'm here with Mixed Mushroom Mike. It is Saturday. And like we promised, we will have the full viral from the Book of Saw spoiler review. And I'm going to repeat this one more time. It is a spoiler review. So if you do not want to get spoiled by this review. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> and if you're scared because of the COVID and you still don't want to go to the theaters you don't want to smell that popcorn stay your ass home the way we got to start this review is of course pretty much breaking down the story and i think i can give you a small recap of the elements of the story we're following detective banks that's chris rock's character and he is a veteran police officer who has been dealing with distrust in the police department or in his own police department because of his yeah. own personal situation. And the reason why he's being looked at the, the way he is, because there was a situation that came up and, you know, there's no snitching on each other. Yeah, yeah, brother. Nobody likes rats. That's a huge element that you even brought up, loyalty. And the fact that there's yep. a whole bunch of corruption that happens within the police department. And loyalty is the reason why we don't see any of these police officers being held accountable. So I believe that's We've a great that element. Right We're seeing that happen right now in real life. So the fact yep. that they added that to a Saw spinoff movie is very impressive. Having said all of that, when Chris Rock was a, a police officer, his partner maliciously killed a witness to a crime, a, a, a witness who was willing to testify under oath to put these police officers down or put them in jail. So the police officer actually kills that supposed witness. Chris Rock was nearby when the shots were went off and Chris Rock is actually completely shocked when his partner tells him that the witness pulled out a gun on him he was he reacted like what the witness pulled out a gun on you so of course it seemed yep. ridiculous to chris rock and ultimately he snitched on his partner oh that's the way it's viewed in the police force i would say he did the right thing and i think that's the message that the movie's trying to send at you there was a little kid in the house that mm. the officer obviously didn't know he was there because he probably would have never had shot the dude so his son was in the house mm. and not only did he know his son was in the house when Chris Rock came because he heard them shots, Chris Rock also seen the son in the house. So in a way, I felt like Chris Rock probably felt like in that moment, even though he knew he was going to get backlash from snitching, this dude just seen his pops get killed right in front of his face. What would you do in a situation like that, you know? Mm. And Chris Rock being a good guy and a good cop, he had no choice. That situation is essentially being unraveled throughout the entire movie. We're seeing little bits and pieces.
pieces throughout the movie that's unveiling more and more of the past. Yeah. We're actually starting to see Samuel L. Jackson's feelings towards his son. And even you have a sense that in modern times, they don't really have a father and son relationship. It's more transactional. That's He's the landlord. That's why you gotta right? go back. Yep. The child involved in that situation 12 years ago was actually his new rookie detective partner, William. And yes. we believed he was dead. As if you saw the movie, you saw that a lot of people believed he was dead. And to see him become the killer, I'm not too entirely sure how shocking it was for you, but I really can't speak for that. So one touch skills. Was you expecting him to be the killer? There was a few people you could expect because they give you those people that you like. And then it's like, damn, she's suspect or he's suspect. So you had certain different type of characters that could have threw you off. So to me, this cop just being this cop just coming out of nowhere when Chris Rock was known for not working with a partner. That really got me thinking like deeper than that. Did he have something to do with the reason why Chris Rock was appointed a partner in the first place? That way he could be appointed Chris Rock's partner. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And to me, they don't really explain that in the movie. Why is this rookie cop being appointed to probably one of the best detectives in that precinct as his partner? One thing I will say to your point, the original Saw, you compare those stories. John Kramer, although you don't know who he is fully until the end of the movie, you definitely yep. are listening about who he is as a person, the way he thinks, the things he's done. Yep. More so than I believe this movie, because I believe some bits of this movie, instead of it actually being focused on the new villain, is spending a lot of its time trying to convince you that it's John Kramer. Like he's out. Everybody knows who he is, but they don't really know who he is. They think he's this rookie cop, but you will never know that he's actually the guy probably pulling all the strings. Only Chris Rock knows. They both survived. How did I you feel about you. the traps? The traps were both simple and elaborate at the same time. Like they were simple in construction, but it obviously took some sort of intelligence, some engineering. So you definitely need some engineering. He's not an engineer that we know of yet. Or, or even left them some blueprints. Like something had to be given to this dude if it's really him, for him to know how to put that stuff together like that. Because if you're gonna set a trap within a police department, that crazy the way it happened. The killer is smarter than we know because they didn't explain any of his intelligence. All they said is that he's been working his exactly. whole life to become a police officer. Yeah. So how could you become a police officer and have yeah. an engineering degree at such a young age? Was this guy a super genius? And he wasn't that young when he saw his father get shot. You can look at him and you can tell he looks like he probably was like, what, seven years old around there? Probably like seven years old. This dude right? was Six literally 22 to 25 years old. So there's no, there's there's no way you had the time to go to engineering school and to become a cop. Right. So now that we really breaking it down, it's like, it gotta be more to that. To me, he's part of the game, just like the other dude was. Mm. He tested, bro. Now we can finally yeah. actually talk about the reveal at the end. He reveals that that he is, in fact, the jigsaw copycat. Yeah. I believe that's the biggest fail of the movie is the reveal itself. The fact that Chris Rock walks into a room and he's just there expecting Chris Rock to walk in compared to jigsaw being fake dead and waking up and being revealed like that. You can't even, that's, they're not even within the same league. The magic trick is the delivery, the way in which you reveal something. I felt like, you know how when, you know how we saw that scene when they were in the bathroom? Me and you in the movie theaters, real time, we looked at each other. Could this be a part one type of trap being reintroduced to 2021? That would be sick. That's what I thought it was at first. And that's why I thought he was going to reveal himself. Going back to what you said, for him to just be standing there, expecting Chris Rock to even make it there. And the way he's just chilling there, like nothing's happening. He got no care in the world. Like he knows Chris Rock, Chris Rock is not going to punch him or slap him. Like to me, it was nothing. Could have been a little more. We can actually talk about the twist itself now. The reveal, I agree, trash. I don't like the reveal itself, lazy. What would you rate that first subject we, we we talk about? Like, what would you rate the story? Mind you, it's Chris Rock. It's his own story. So you also got to take that in mind. On its own, as a movie itself, it's a very interesting movie. I, I never got bored. The movie ran oh. through. So you never got bored we, at any wait, moment. Wait. It was entertaining. Chris Rock was entertaining in many ways. He was hilarious. He was suspenseful. I thought he did his job. Don't forget Samuel. But this is when we got to talk about the actual ending of the movie. When it comes to the ending, 
I believe that's where the twist actually becomes interesting. He's actually trying to recruit Chris Rock and he starts to explain that the spiral symbol is one of progression and one of, of rebirth. And essentially it confirms exactly what I said in my analyzation video. You can go watch that. It's also viewed as the symbol of change. Life cycles and cycles of the natural world create change. The old dies away so the new can come forth. Hello, Detective Banks. Do you know where your officers are? So the spiral symbol wasn't just a connection to Billy the Puppet. It's essentially yeah. where his philosophy is, which yeah. is he believes it's not just connected to John Kramer individually. It should be a system in place to stop all the corrupted cops and all the corrupted people. So he tries to recruit Chris Rock. And the last final game is Samuel L. Jackson, his father, in a trap, pretty much positioned like a puppet. With the SWAT incoming, he has to either kill William or shoot the spiral target that releases Samuel L. Jackson. And I believe the logic of that is what you said earlier. He was trying yeah. to test Chris Rock's morality. You said loyalty, but I think You're right. it's his morality because yep. Chris Rock stepped in to do the right thing. And he usually does the right thing. But since it's his father, he wasn't one able to do sure. the right thing. One thing we should, one thing for sure we both agree on, he was not going to kill his father. But I believe that is the message of the story. Was he willing to kill his father, knowing that his father was corrupt, yeah. understanding his own morals? Would he be willing to kill his father? And that ultimately would have been the biggest test in order for he him probably, to be yeah. recruited by William. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, that goes to show that he'll potentially be like, all right, this dude can help me. If he just killed a corrupt cop and is his own dad, then why wouldn't he accept my recruitment why wouldn't he come work for me if he just killed his dad you know what i'm saying so he gave chris rock the option right to either shoot the bullseye save his pops or the the cop the rookie cop which is portrayed as the jigsaw killer at the yeah end. great i love that you're going it. into that what happens if that happens john if he shoots william right in order to save his father he has to shoot william yeah right but william told him if you shoot me your father's dead. Does that mean he lied? Does that mean Samuel L. Jackson still dies? He wanted to kill corrupt cops. Who's the most corrupt cop of them all? Right. Who used to lead Article 8? That is the point of the whole crux of, of well, William's argument. That's what William well, believes. That is the question he's posing to Chris Rock. Yeah. Your father yeah. is the guy who actually led the culture, that actually led yeah. to the situation. So you stepped in yes. when the partner was involved. Are you willing to step in when your father is, is known to be the corrupter? He that obviously was so cool. not, and I don't believe most people would. And I think that is a beautiful moment of the movie. That is what he was trying to bring. That is the political social commentary he was trying and to you bring. Know what else I, you, know what, you know what else I took from this movie, Michael? What? When you watch a regular Jigsaw movie or whatever, John Kramer actually gives you a real chance of surviving. With this dude traps, no matter what you do, no matter what, it was a game with him. You was dying no matter what. And the perfect example will be the ending when Samuel L. Jackson ended up being picked back up from the floor and being fired at by a firing squad. We don't know how many of these traps are actually winnable. Yep. Because if you say the first one, exactly. the, tr the train trap, that one yep. was definitely winnable. That one was winnable. If he would have just stepped off the stepladder, he would have survived. They would have ripped his tongue, but he wouldn't have got hit with the yep. train. So that one, he could have survived. I believe the traps were designed to give him a chance, but they were way too quick in order for them to really be given a real chance. The female detective, the, the head of the detective in, 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 in current times, he did her extra because yeah. no matter what, she was going to have yeah, her spinal yeah. cord um, ripped. So you're right. There was an imbalance of the actual chances and that people would he really did it within He did it within the police department to get her in her own place of work where she done the corruption at. John, I think I'm about to blow your mind right now because now I'm going to add more evidence to your theory. Mm. Your theory mm -hmm. is that you believe William is not the head of this new jigsaw you believe he's a pawn in a bigger game right i'm almost i'm almost confident to say i'm off like 85 percent of that bro well if that's what you believe why haven't they shown the face of the delivery man Remember the delivery man who dropped off two separate packages? They never showed oh, the dude's face. He ended up being the head of the game, supposedly, right? Right. Supposedly. But to me, he was in 
he was in too many situations where he could have died. A game this crazy and this like smart, the ingenuity and everything to this, he wouldn't put himself in a situation where if he dies, that's it. To me, I'm like, that's why I'm going back to the cop being part of this bigger game. And maybe the reason why we don't feel connected to, to this new jigsaw is that the point is that we're not supposed to get attached to another individual. That's exactly what William said. It isn't an individual that we should attach this to. It's a system. So now if you look at the overall story, you especially past part seven, right? So we're looking at jigsaw and the spiral from the book of saw jigsaw was a prequel but half of that movie was a sequel and it was also a spinoff so the spinoff was that the copycat killer was logan right and there was a part of the movie where someone said this is the copycat the copycat yeah so i'm not entirely sure if he was referring to logan but what this sets up is that this universe of saw there's multiple people who have been inspired by jigsaw so now you got william You got Logan. They they don't show where he gets his information from the Jigsaw ad. Like, they don't show anything. Where does his history with the Jigsaw killer come into play in this? They don't show it. They don't. They didn't have no scenes of him growing up, looking at articles, reading articles. So it's like, where did you get this inspiration? How did you learn how to be trapped? Like, who inspired you? You young. How do you know about the Jigsaw killer? Who taught you? Exactly. That is the movie's biggest problem. So it's like you, they might let you think, bro, this movie is totally on purpose. Are right, we going to let these guys think that this is the killer? This is crazier than this. It goes no, beyond but I think just a rookie cop. They never show you the guy who delivered the packages. He delivers and two William separate packages. Himself. This movie was heavily compared to Seven. And in the movie Seven, I don't know if you've seen it. I don't want to ruin it for you. But towards the end, let's just say Morgan Freeman's character, Brad Pitt's character is Chris Rock and William, right? Yeah. There was a mm-hmm. third bystander in that situation. In the ending sequence, there's Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt, and you have Kevin Spacey as the killer. What I'm trying to say is in this movie, you only have Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. Yeah. And to your point, maybe the killer is still out there. We don't know who that killer is. And maybe that killer is John Kramer. How the hell? And like you said, what? when did this movie take place? Is this before Jigsaw? This gives you that same saw it factor. It gives you the traps. It gives you those theories. Now you can go home and talk with your boys that seen the movie and put those theories out there. Not a lot of movies could do that. But every saw movie that you're going home like, damn. I got to go see this shit again. I'm only doing that for Saw and Marvel. When I hear something that got anything to do associated with Saw, if you're saying Fireu from the book of Saw, then I do expect it to be a movie, but I don't expect it to be so far off from the original. To me, they did a good job making it its own, but not making it so much that you damn, they took the whole Saw if factor out of it. To me, it's like Saw, but to me, they're trying to elevate the story to more. And I like Mm. it. You have to connect it much more directly than the movie actually does. And the fact that they barely mentioned John Kramer is definitely going to nick it when you're talking about it from a Saw fan perspective. When you're looking at it from its own merit, I believe the movie was great. I believe it definitely shows um, homages to the original Saw. It even has a scene that kind of teases Chris Rock needing to 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 hacksaw his hand he, off he brought yeah, it exactly so give it a hand. like you know what i'm saying you got a comedian coming in to a, a series that if you come and you mess this up your career might be over and to talk about the positives that you're referring to i do believe this movie definitely establishes what saw is even mm-hmm. without jigsaw So although I believe the movie is not as good because it doesn't connect to Jigsaw, I do believe the movie mostly succeeds in creating the identity of Saw outside of John Kramer. I would have loved to see the doll from the original movies once or twice within the spiral. If you're going to call it the book of Saw, really give me a reference that goes really, like, really back to that movie. That's an iconic figure. To me, that's the face of Saw. When people think of Saw and they think of Jigsaw, they think this freaking doll is Jigsaw. Right, because in a lot of ways, Jigsaw, he is the personification of Jigsaw because he spoke through the door. So every tape was spoken through the door. 
So it was Jigsaw in a way. And like you said, that's what people represented him as. So the fact that he didn't even have that, but maybe if they would have had that and they would have had that voice, how do you feel about the voice? Is that my voice? <laughs> Is that my voice? I, I don't know, to be honest. You know, they are trying to make it his own. So obviously they're not going to try to use the same voice. But like if you do you gonna... believe the voice, even if it's different? Was it as compelling as John Kramer's? Absolutely not. No way. That voice is iconic. We're going to give you our rating. I have, I'm going to give this movie a three and a half out of five. That was my exact same rating. And the reason why I do that is because I felt like they should have referenced John Kramer in this movie a little better. If you're calling this a copycat, I need to hear why I really think it's a copycat. I need to hear this John Kramer's name more. I didn't hear his name in the movie as much as I would have liked to. I know they're trying to make it his own. But if you try to say it's a copycat, let me see. Let me see what's making y'all really feel like it's a copycat just besides the puzzles. Yeah, like what the hell does William have to do with anything when it comes to the overall plot? At least what Jigsaw did, although it didn't hit as much because you never saw Logan in any other movie. It at least connected you to Jigsaw. And the reason why he went against the system is because they denied his wife in the first place yeah, yeah but he was taught by jigsaw that's what i'm saying to your point earlier they never showed you yeah. how this guy got the ingenuity to do exactly. any of this they didn't show you any of that and it definitely yeah. makes the movie to me this is going to be on my own i would actually give the movie a two and a half out of five if you're talking about saw because it doesn't yeah. connect it doesn't satisfy that saw itch if you just finish watching the saw movies Oh, it definitely about doesn't it. satisfy you because you just you finished watching. Right there, bro. If you do go into it wanting to see a new character and you want to see this universe expand, I think it does a decent job without elaborating so much yeah. on his connection to even knowing any of this. He doesn't even need to have a John Kramer connection. Can he have a connection to Dr. Gordon? Can he have a connection to D D Detective Hoffman? Can he be related he to Amanda? Female. Yeah, can it be yeah, related exactly. to a man? Yeah. There's no where are, connection. Where, but where are these surviving jigsaw people? You know what I'm saying? That's another thing. You could have had one of them reference come in, pop up in the movie, right? That would have been a great reference. But like, oh shit, Amanda? No, the she's dead. Like, she's dead, she to is. be fair. But you could definitely... Where's Logan? No, you know, I mean, I'm not saying necessarily her, huh, but you like get somebody that's still alive to go in there. Maybe he was teaching this dude, William, about Jigsaw or whatever. This movie definitely is a movie that can either go up in the future or it can go down in the future. If John's yeah. theory is correct that his deeper connection is actually the fact that he's just a pawn in, the, in, a, in a bigger game. He's following orders. Yeah. That would be compelling. Because I don't believe the movie establishes this guy as the creme de la creme but anyway. The, and I think that's a big point, to your point. Wasn't the, wasn't the doctor following orders? Yeah, he was actually doing John's final request and Jigsaw told him, I'll keep no more secrets from you. So he knows the secrets. And for all we know, he's alive. You got Logan, who's alive. And now you got William. I think the movie failed. Like, he doesn't have a name. He doesn't they even really have a name so he doesn't have an identity the movie calls him yeah, the jigsaw copycat he doesn't have no identity that's why you don't connect to him you connected to john no. kramer because he became jigsaw they explain what he did you got a real idea who this guy was i think yeah. the movie also could have done better with um solidifying william's family like you could have probably seen a wife and then seen his baby we that would have actually back, believed it that goes back to my point where i was like why why this dude, like, why is he his partner, but he never took him to his house, never showed him his family, none of that. I think the movie does a, a decent job of convincing you that it could be Samuel L. Jackson's character. But since we've seen the trailer and we've seen him in the trap, we like, who the hell is going to put himself in the trap like that? So we knew it wasn't Samuel L. Jackson. But if you eliminate that part of the trailer, I do believe the movie itself does a decent job of convincing you it's Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Because me, you see Samuel L. in the dark scenes, dude, going into the warehouses, right? There. It, looks, it looks fishy. It looks fishy. It looks fishy. But fishy. since we knew he was going to be in that trap, it kind of like you knew you eliminated him from the list as a as a jigsaw killer. And I think... Unless he was trying to do the, unless he was trying to do the John Kramer play dead, but actually put himself in a trap this time and act like, you know? Well, but no. he actually did that. He They try to pay an homage to Saw 1 because he did play dead. But what the movie failed to do is showing you that scene, really. They flashed it, 
Remember when they said that he was dead and they showed you the Charlie oh, tattoo? Yeah, he's, yeah he took You've that. never really seen his body. With John Kramer, his body was there the entire movie. The entire time, yeah. And it was you shocking didn't... to us when he just got up and was like, to, me, I know, to me. I don't know if you guys know this watching this. The movie only got a million dollars to make overall. So that means the overall budget was a million dollars. So Tobin Bell, the actor who plays Jigsaw, had to really lay on the floor for days on end, hours on end. So guess what? When he got up and it looked like that, like he was tired as shit, he really was tired as shit. When you bring realism to, to scenes, that's what really brings them out. And that's yeah, the beauty of the Saw universe. Well, I believe the way we're ending this story is really hard to really pinpoint where it could go. Us finalizing uh, 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 our real theories on it. And I think in that element, the movie really succeeds in being a Saw movie. Because you got to rewatch the movie a bunch of I times. Like it. It, it's a very enjoyable movie. And I believe it's a very rewatchable movie. It has a lot of funny moments. There's, some, there's of course, the gore. There's oh, elements. Yeah. So the movie was very good. This is a great video. If there's any of the movies that you guys want us to specifically review or talk about, drop them in the comments below. Follow One Time Skills we'll on YouTube. It. Follow yeah. Mixed Martial Mike on YouTube. Because we will be doing future videos. And like Mixed Martial Mike said, if I got any suggestions, I want us to re do a review, show, movie, doesn't matter. Let us know. We'll take our time out our day. We'll watch it for you guys. And we'll give you our honest opinion like we're doing right now. Have a good day, guys. Bye.